had a storyline with Tessa Blanchard. Everyone always wants to talk about Tessa. Well, also, also you. you guys. I was in the match. I'm pretty sure I was. Yeah. Um, so you're involved in, like, on TV, there's like a intergender wrestling. I don't believe it should be intergender wrestling. I think it's just pro wrestling at this point. Everyone, uh... Oh, no, I'm sorry. Oh, no problem. Uh, I didn't know if you needed to record something. or I, I got confused. I'm very scared. No, uh... I don't think it should be intergender wrestling at this point. I think in 2019, everyone wants equality. Everyone wants uh, everyone to be looked at as equal. And I think Impact Wrestling is the first company to step up and actually do that. Okay. Was there any concern? There's a lot more intergender wrestling on the, on the indies now. Yep. Was there concern about doing it on the I think maybe by management, but not for me. Uh, I know some of the other people that had got given the opportunity to be in the same storyline and have the same chance didn't really want to do it so I stepped up and took it as a challenge because I knew what it could do for the professional wrestling business I knew it could change the business for the better I think we did just that do you think that there's going to be uh, more people like me on Tessa? I know there was like a more comedic one with Scarlett. Do you think there's going to be more? I can only hope so. I think it's something that would really help Impact Wrestling stand out from everyone else that much more. Jessica Havoc, Jordan Grace, Rosemary, Taya. Uh, the majority of the Knockouts roster could go in there with that guys and tell amazing stories. Is that how you actually you say USA? I do not. Um, yes. So, you know, we were talking earlier about. Uh, you have a great complexion, great hair right now, man. You're killing it. About the different styles of wrestling, and now that uh, 2019 wrestling has become uh, much more mainstream and popular culture, you've kind of got both sides of the spectrum. You've got hard hitting, a lot of action, um, not much showboating, and then you've got the stuff that's a bit slower. Uh, after every punch, it's like a you know a defensive end gets a tackle and he's dancing around. You know, what do you think is the most attention grabbing for your non die hard wrestling fans? Someone who's just flipping through the channels, sees wrestling, decides to stay on it for 25. I think to be versatile and to be a little bit of everything. Right now in professional wrestling, to be one of the top guys and the reason professional wrestling is blowing up again because it's not just one style or the other. There, there's people that can do technical, lucha libre, hard hitting, character driven stuff, comedy, uh, horror driven stuff. There's every little thing and that's what's making professional wrestling so special right now. Also, the athletes in professional wrestling are some of the best athletes in the entire world right now and I think anytime someone clicks on that or sees that or sees me kind of promo is what makes people connect and instantaneously want to watch wrestling again. Do you think the the rise in amazing athleticism because back in the day uh, a lot of wrestlers were just really big they could throw people around. Now you've got incredible athletes. you got people like Brian Cage. Right. Who, he can do springboards and four feet fifties, but he can also grill press me out of the ring into the fourth row. Do you feel like athleticism has taken the forefront over personality as it relates to building characters in, in some sense? I, in some sense, but also in the same in, in the same thing, like probably not, because like now, like you you have to be everything. You look at some of the best professional wrestlers in the world right now; they're not just one style. They're able to mix it up and be versatile. And to be successful in wrestling right now, you got to be versatile. And I think I'm one of the most versatile wrestlers on the planet today, right? Now. I think maybe maybe some they do. I think that's what I like about your character the most because it's so exciting. Like you see, I'm really good at professional down, wrestling. Yeah, I'll keep saying that. I mean, you very modest down. also. You come down the ramp and you automatically you're drawing in and you're kind of like. Like, wow, I, want to see I have that it so, factor. Yeah, that's what it is. I connect. What was it about developing, developing that character? It's just years and years and years and years of trial and error. It's uh, building upon what I started with to something else, to something else, to something else. Never staying one thing, never staying complacent. Always having that opportunity to change myself every couple months to do something to stay relevant and stay where I wanted to be in the professional wrestling business. And my character is just me turned way up. Like, sure, uh, I, I may be a modest person in real life, but at the same point, like, Sammy Callahan, the character, and Sammy Callahan, the person, there's a lot of things that intertwine together. And that's all the best characters in professional wrestling. Obviously, Stone Cold Steve Austin just turned up. The Rock is The Rock just turned up. Undertaker is obviously Undead Wizard in his real life, and that's just turned up. <laughs>
Well, now you've got the title match coming at Bound for Glory, so you're in a position to be the, be the guy. I will be the guy. And you have worked hard to be a household name like, across the world. I think I've done that. I was one of the first guys to quit WWE and go out and create my own future and bet on myself. And now, any company, I'm one of the biggest professional wrestlers walking this planet today. Okay, see, you're so good. You just answered my question before I could get it out there. I'm really good at interviews, too. So. <laughs> I'm really good. <laughs> Nice shield shirt. I was adjusted. Thank you. Yeah. I, I, I was saying I didn't I know, know I was that guys. guy. I put on yeah. a shirt this morning coming out here, and then I got like down the one on one. Ah, crap. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Let's go to Impact to wear a shield shirt. <laughs> As it relates to you as a performer, um, and you know, do you like to have the freedom to go out there and be yourself? Hundred percent. Do you like? I don't. I don't like to be told what to do. I've never been that guy, and other places I've been that guy, and it, it didn't work out very well for me. So, like, I'll never walk on eggshells again. I always do what I think is correct because at the end of the day, ninety percent of the time, I'm usually pretty spot on with it. Uh, but there is those times where I'm in the wrong, and I'll, I'll be the first one to admit when I'm in the wrong. You got a, you seem to have a great personality. You're very quick witted. How many uh, performers are like you, where given the mic with none, little... none. <laughs> like, so does I truly, like, still... there's always these fights of like who's the best heel in professional wrestling, who's the best promo. It's me, one hundred percent. No one holds a candle to what I can do on the mic right now, and no one holds a candle to what I can make people feel right now. Because I'm a real person. Well, speaking as a real person, what, you were in WWE and you were working your way, but you had that moment where you realized that wasn't your place. When yep. was that? The day I did I'd been like that for a while. And then one day I was like, you know what, I'm quitting. And then they they wanted me to stay. They wanted me to like not work for a month. And you know what I did? I bet on myself. And two days after I quit, I, I walked in. In Chicago, and I and I made a statement and launched the Chicago independent wrestling scene to where it is today. And now it's very, very sweet that on October 20th, a Bound for Glory, I get to walk into Chicago, the territory that I helped build, and walk out the world champion. See what I did there? I yeah. turned it on. Yeah, you turned it on. But the Chicago crowd is always so interesting to me too, because it seems like a crowd that loves you as much as it hates you. And I don't oh, mean very you particularly. Much so. I mean like just about any Everything. professional wrestler. They're very offended, but they also are very it's very edgy. It's very. It's a, it's a mind blow. Yeah. yeah it, it just. It seems like the kind of wave that you can either surf or crash under. Yep. And I surf. I'm really good at. <laughs> what are your thoughts about high prof high profile athletes from other sports coming in? I love it. I 100% love Even it. Even they kind of jump the line. I don't care. You know why? It, it, it's it's storytelling. You know what I want to see in my wrestling? I want to see the world's greatest boxer wrestle the world's greatest professional wrestler like that's the kind of storytelling i love and sure guys work hard for opportunities but at the same point we'd be stupid to not want guys from other aspects of life to come in because it just launches us all to that next echelon and it brings coverage of people that may not watch professional wrestling and it brings them a, a chance to really watch it and possibly connect and become a new lifelong fan I'm quite i'm a smart cookie <laughs> So your match with Cage coming up. I mean, what is it gonna be like when you beat him? And you have that. You get on that. Well, I'm gonna beat him. Go and just have that. It's gonna be great. I, uh, the the best part of it is I'm a guy that people don't want to be the face of a company. I've never been that guy. I've never been a guy that looks like Brian Cage, the perfect model citizen. The guy that everyone, that's the guy we put on the poster. That's the guy that we make the action figures out of. But the difference between me and Brian Cage is I connect with people. There are just as many people out there in the world that connect to people like me because I know how to look people dead in their eyes and, and make them feel something. So when I become the face of a company, it's gonna be amazing for me. It's gonna be amazing for all the other people around the world that will tell no or they're not good enough. And at the end of the day, what's Brian Cage been the champion since March and defending the title two times. Yeah, I, I don't take days off. I don't care if I'm hurt or injured or anything. At this point, he breaks down more than a McDonald's ice cream machine. I, I gotta ask the hat. I see slick and nasty printed on the side yep. there. Is, is that just you personally, or what is that? This is, I am wearing a uh, hat of a wrestler that I've stole his soul. That's what I do. Any wrestler that I've stole their soul in their career, I get one of their hats and I wear it everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> I, I couldn't help it. It was just sticking out, and I couldn't tell if you were describing yourself, describing another person, or. Ah, all right. Fascinating. I'm very fascinating. I know. Thank you. <laughs> 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 
What happens when you're presented with a storyline that you hate? I make the best of it. I make it work. I've always done that. Like, too many people want to bitch and complain about, oh, I don't like this or I don't want to do this. Uh, you know what I do? I'm a very versatile person. I'm really good at my job. So any situation that's given to me, I'll figure a way to make it work. I think I've done that my, pretty much my entire career for the most part. How hard is it to be an uh, evil, scary character? It's not um, a character. It's me in real life. It's pretty simple. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Um, but to be able to keep the fans no, not getting behind you because you're so good at it. If they like me, they like me. If they don't like me, they don't like me. That's the great thing about professional wrestling. Professional wrestling, we are our own product. We are our own brand. We're pretty much our own sports team. It depends the area or the market that you're in at the time. For instance, uh, a couple years ago, the Miami Heat was the biggest heels in basketball. But in Miami, they're the biggest baby faces. Then they go somewhere else and everyone hates them. Or look at the Patriots. Some places love the Patriots. Other places think they're the most evil people in the world. Not any human being in their lifetime is always going to be 100% good or 100% bad. People in real life are gray. It, 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 people change. People evolve. And like that's what my character is and that's what professional wrestling is coming. It's not just red and black in it. Well, I think we've covered that pretty much every match you're in is suddenly the greatest one there's ever been. 100%. Um, who do you think is the guy you could put on the best show with? Terry Funk. Terry Funk in his prime. I would have loved to wrestle Terry Funk. One of my biggest inspirations. That's nice. Is there somebody working out there in the independence you'd like to take a shot at? I'd really like to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Daisuke Sakimoto again. Uh, I wrestled him. England, Germany, America, Japan. Uh, I had some of the best matches of my career and really grown as a performer. And I would have loved to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with him on American soil, especially on television and where we both are in our careers right now. Is he more of a technical, strong style? Oh, he's a bad dude, man. He is a big, strong... He's like Brian Cage if Brian Cage didn't leave his feet and just punched you in the head repeatedly. All right. <laughs> The uh, match with Tessa is probably the most high-profile pro intergender match in television history. Yeah, 100%. We changed the wrestling business. Yeah. You're welcome, again. And uh, how has the uh, feedback been for you from people who have never seen such a... It's been amazing. We changed the wrestling business. We set out to change the world, and we did just that. Uh, I, I, I've said this a thousand times in the last five days. I don't think it's just intergender wrestling. It's just pro wrestling. Like, we are in 2019. It's time for equality. People from all walks of life, people from any sex, people from anything they believe in, everyone is the same. And it's about time that on a major standpoint, we all start looking at the world like that. Absolutely. I'm really good at interviews. <laughs> Succinct, to the point, and sparkle. Uh -oh. We're just staring daggers in there. Gotta get that title. <laughs> yeah, you would wear maroon. What kind of person wears a maroon shirt?